We are SC Pac-12 title game preview. Gary Pasquitz joined by Kevin Bruce. Kevin, want to get this started. You had a chance to come watch practice today. Want to get some thoughts on the team. Let's start off talking Trojan offense versus Stanford Cardinal defense in this game. What do you think are some of the things that might be different from what USC showed in the first game to what we're going to see on, on Friday? Yeah, actually, a great question. <clears throat> what I'd like to see is actually some of what worked in the September game, which was a two-back set. Uh, we haven't showed that other than at in the Stanford game in September uh, through much of the season, and it was very effective. We ran a two-back set, so you've got Rojo, Stephen Carr, Sam Darnold, and uh, three receivers, two on one side and one on the other side. Um, if you're a defense, who do you cover? Mm -hmm. Who do you worry about? Answer, you worry about them all. So what do you do about it? You have a run threat, you got a pass threat, uh, and if that uh, really doesn't work out very well, you got Sam Darnold running with the football. And Stanford will be challenged in that particular set, and it allows us to really toggle into a power formation because we use some of that as well against Stanford. We didn't use it much throughout the balance of the season as well, but we went with some two tight end look. We went with some tight end and H-back look, which was kind of interesting, and then we went to the two-back set. So what I like is to apply that <clears throat> uh, again uh, to Stanford, but in, in a way that uh, they are less prepared because when you look at our tape, our film, and, and other uh, uh, you know plays throughout the uh, balance of the season, you don't see that look very much, and I like it. The other piece that has changed is that our offensive line uh, look is, is, is different now, right? And we've got some moves and some changes, and uh, Vianney out now for the season right. uh, allows us then to bring, you know, have a new look at, at, at a guard position which is really important to stop the nose tackle Phillips and to really manage him. He's very disruptive. He brings a center rush, a push. He controls the A-gap very well. Ask Notre Dame. They found that out, right? And we, we really need to have a solution prepared for that. I think it can be handled through uh, some mechanics and, uh, frankly, some very stout physical football. That would be great to see. And and speaking of Carr and Rojo, people seem to forget both of those backs went over 100 yards. It was actually Carr who outgained Rojo in that game. So good to have Steven back right now. Absolutely. Uh, let's flip it over to defense. Talk about, you're going to look at the Trojan secondary, I think, and those Stanford receivers. They got some tall boys over there. K.J. Costello throwing it up on the fades. What do you see with that? Yeah, that's a serious challenge. And it, it, Stanford provides a mismatch on height, not speed. A lot of teams will uh, provide the mismatch for, through formation, and we do some of that too on offense, by the way, but also formation and speed. They uh, really apply the mismatch with height and formation. Very different approach. That allows uh, and forces the quarterback, in this uh, case, K.J. Costello, to really throw effective fade routes. That's a tough pattern to throw. Mm -hmm. It's a tougher pattern to defend. If thrown properly, it is tough. All right, so what we saw uh, earlier today uh, during practice was the secondary practicing very hard against various types of fade routes, tight end fade, uh, wide receiver fades, slot back fades, all, all in the various uh, you know, parts of the uh, uh, red zone, deep ball, uh, various looks. And what was going on was a, a few things. Technique-wise, it was about when do you read the receiver turn and high point the ball? You're not going to get taller overnight, but you can jump at the proper time if you're able to, to really read the receiver mm -hmm. and make the play. That, that, that's certainly a, a big piece of what was going on. The other uh, elements that I noticed was the help uh, inside out from safety to cornerback. And uh, we'll see some of that, we'll have to see some of that uh, coverage with some help to uh, cornerbacks, not just one side or the other. It will move around depending on the formation and sets. And then one of the things that's being talked about so much is the fact that USC looking fresh this week, coming off a bye, a much needed bye after 12 straight weeks of football. It, it, how is that an issue to you? Do you see it having an impact on this game? Yeah, uh, the bye and, the, and just the rest was necessary for us, mm -hmm. uh, we it was just we were running on fumes. The gas tank was really seriously empty. Guys are nicked up, tired. Twelve weeks straight. That's rough. I mean, yeah. that's rough. You can love football, but you can still be tired, right? Um, on the other hand, it's like, well, Stanford's going to have to play a championship game after six days of rest. They're they're rested. They're fine. Don't worry about it. Maybe a little nicked up. They'll, they're going to show up. They're going to be ready to play football, and we're going to show up, and we're going to be ready to play football, and we're going to have to play sixty minutes of sound Trojan football. If we do that, protect the ball, 
we're good to go. Sounds good. You ready to win a Pac-12 title? Let's do it. All right. For Kevin Bruce, this is Gary Pasquitz. You're watching We RSC.